All right, our last session for the afternoon um, is around uh, meeting spaces. Or we, I think it's called meeting rooms in here, but I, I think we probably need to redefine that a little bit to, to meeting spaces. Um, one of the things that I've been finding in the last few years is uh, as people are adopting uh, Microsoft UC platform uh, is that there's had some challenges around it. How do they extend that experience into meeting spaces or, or their meeting rooms? Again. The concept of a meeting room has been evolving uh, quite a lot as well, especially with, with initiatives like activity-based working, is that you're having lots of uh, huddle-type um, meetings and people are meeting in outside the office environment and cafes and that sort of thing. So the, there's the, the original concept of the meeting room has is, is changed. It's not just a, a room anymore with a table and, and a number of chairs and maybe a screen at the end. There's a whole range of, of things to look at. So um, i grab my clicker. In, uh, in the Link 2013 world um, prior, we, uh, Microsoft released uh, a concept called Link Room Systems. Uh, this was brought to market through a number of partners like um, Polycom, Crestron, and Smart. One of the, the drivers for this was to try to improve the, that meeting room experience. Uh, and there's one specific challenge that we're looking to address, which was the time it took to actually get a meeting started. And, and, and obviously when we're talking about meetings in this case, we're generally talking about meetings that involve not just people in the room, but also external participants in that room. But it's, all, it's also good to consider that sometimes you just need the meeting room for people just in that room. So we all need to think about, always need to think about local content in that room as well. But one of the things I found is that it takes eight to 13 minutes to actually get the technology to start up and get the, the call established and get people in, in the meeting. It, it's quite a lot of uh, time it, it takes, a lot of lost productivity in just getting the technology to work um, to be able to start a meeting and actually have a discussion. So one of the, the main objectives of a link room systems was to, to simplify that and the idea was to have a, a one touch experience. So generally you, you would book that um, space uh, it, it's integrated with the Exchange calendar, uh, and when you walk in there, your meeting details are on the screen, either on the big touch screen at the end of the room, or maybe on a touch controller on the, on the table. You go in there and press the button, this is my meeting, start it, and the other people would have already joined. So, and that's something that they did deliver in, uh, as part of that product. The, the initial versions of those products were somewhat limited, though, in the audio and video options, that they were designed for a particular sort of style of room, and it was more the traditional sort of meeting room slash boardroom. Um, so they sort of fit just in, in this middle size, in between small and um, mi uh, large and small uh, meeting rooms. Um, so what they've done uh, now with Skype for Business is evolve that, that ecosystem now, and they're putting a lot of effort to working with partners on, del on delivering more solutions that, that suit different meeting spaces. Uh, and there's a couple of products I'll touch on that, that are uh, being released um, later this year uh, that, that will uh, sort of coincide with it as well. But, the, the concept of a link room system um, is still going to exist. It'll, the branding obviously would change to Skype room systems and there'll be new functionality and new devices and accessories that'll be extended to, to support that and, and make that platform um, suit different spaces. But there's a couple of new devices that are, that, have, uh, that are coming up as well. So one is the Surface Hub, and I'll touch a bit, bit more on that, and the other is the Roundtable 100. They're sort of a sort of opposite end of the, of the scale. One's a very low cost device um, for these huddle spaces typically. Uh, and the other one is, is actually kind of a, a new genre of, of collaboration and meeting space as well. The other thing that's probably not shown in this slide is what happens maybe as a result of not having all, all the options and available for, for Skype meeting rooms is that there has been an evolution where customers and, and integrators have actually started sort of do, DIY um, meeting rooms. So we've, you'll see um, lots of meeting rooms that have a PC in there, they have a a web camera attached to it and a speakerphone, that sort of thing. So they're using general purpose computing and PCs and the standard desktop PCs to equip the meeting rooms. And you can actually get some pretty good results out of that. And it's, it's a low cost way of doing it. They have some limitations that though as well. So that there's certainly um, a, a, a place for a more managed and locked down type appliance type solution and meeting space. But um, there, there can be some benefits in having a general purpose PC in there that has all the right audio and video um, capabilities, but can be used for other applications as well. You can have your line of business apps. You can even join a, a WebEx if you get invited to, to one from someone else. You've got the audio and video in that room and you can go and use it. So um, think about how you're going to use that room. If, it, if it's just going to be, I'm going to use it for Skype meetings and I'll send the invites to external parties and they'll use their web browser or they'll federate with me. Um, 
but you may have a case where you, you do lots of meetings with external parties and you have to use their tools, so you, you might want to equip rooms and spaces to, to suit that as well. So when you're thinking about your, your meeting spaces, there's sort of four key factors that you've you got to sort of balance out, right? Um, so one is function, so how many audio, video inputs, outputs and screens and stuff do I need? What do I need to do in that room? Again, this is but both for local content, so if we're going to go have a, a chat with a couple of people in that room, I want to put something on the screen and talk to that and, and annotate that maybe and collaborate around a document. Um, but also the online experience as well, so inviting in people outside the room. So there's a whole bunch of different features and functionality you need to consider um, there. And we can do that, there's lots of options. But on, on the opposing side of that, there's a usability challenge as well. You can have 10 different inputs, but trying to train your users on how to switch between the right input and at the volume set at the right level and choose the right audio device, that's, I guess, that one of the things you get to look at at the same time. Uh, and again, there are solutions around that. You can put in automation, you can do some, some clever design things to try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, and in the other direction, we've got um, the design, I guess, which is more probably the, the look and feel and the environment and architecture. A lot of customers might have, um, might have a customer-facing sort of meeting room, and they want that to be look really slick, uh, to sort of represent sort of cutting-edge design and make their, their company look great. Um, so that's something that people see value in. They invest a lot of money in that. So uh, the opposing side to that, again, is, is that drives up costs. And in fact, if you want to get the balance of all three of these right, then the, yeah, the cost of that is going to go up. So we can reduce costs by, by reducing any one of these, but if you want the sort of perfect solution, you've got this sort of dilemma of trying to get that right balance. So the Surface Hub is a, a device that Microsoft has uh, announced, and you, you'll see um, there's many videos and demos available. I actually had one in Chicago at Ignite you could go and have a play with, but it's actually built upon the Windows 10 platform, so it's actually going to be, it'll be released in the Windows 10 release time, after the Windows 10 release time, which is not too far away. Um, but it is, as I said, it's kind of a, a new concept of, of collaboration in a lot of ways. Uh, it is a, an immersive touchscreen um, experience that has built-in audio video capabilities. It has Skype for Business built into the, the product. It actually has two cameras, one either side of the screen, and it's designed for spaces where people interact at the screen, interact with content or documents or things on the screen, data on the screen, um, while at the same time allowing those people to be uh, in an online meeting and sharing that experience with people who are not physically there. So that the two cameras do some clever things, like you can actually, you actually be at the screen where interacting with the document, and the camera will actually capture you in the view, uh, and it'll automatically switch to the opposite end of the camera if you turn around and turn the other way. So there's, some, there's quite a lot of smarts in there. Audio and everything is all built into that one unit, and it's available in, uh, in two sizes. I think it's 55 and 84 inch from memory. But, um, so that'll be something that comes out um, soon. Uh, again, be, it's a pretty sort of interesting concept, and it's, it's largely for these highly collaborative uh, environments. Another new device that you'll uh, see, and you can see videos of this. We, uh, we haven't got one, I don't know if Polycom's got one here yet, um, but uh, I assume they'll soon have these to be able to demonstrate. Um, is what's called the Roundtable 100. The, the purpose of this device was to, uh, first of all, drive that cost price point right down. This is target price for this, I understand, is about $1,000 US. Um, it is a bit different from a traditional way of, of how we start the meetings. Again, the, 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 the objectives will still remain to, to be able to have uh, a meeting and initiate that call uh, in a very small time. So the target, I think, was less than a minute. Maybe it should be well less than a minute. Um, but this is effectively an unmanaged device and it, and it leverage, leverages cloud services. So how it works is you walk in, you actually have a mobile app that you would use to interact with the device. You will tell it that um, you, you compare your, your app with the device and it reads your calendar and, and looks at your Skype for Business meetings and say, I want to join this meeting from this room and this device. The device will then independently go and connect to your meeting um, so that, and, it, and it has the ability then to do some content and things. So, it's actually it's, it's a very different way, and it's, I find it sometimes hard to explain how it works, but that you actually do no configuration of the device. IT doesn't really do anything apart from you unpack it in the box, but the setup time is, is, is less than 10 minutes. It's basically unpack it, plug it in, and you pair it to something, and you just start using it. Um, so it's, it's sort of a bit of a, a game changer in a way. So that we see these types of things, these devices being put into more into these sort of huddle spaces. So speaking of the spaces, um, We've got, these are, I guess, some 
some broad sort of definitions that Microsoft using is to des describe some of these spaces, and, and shortly I'll, I'll ask Jared to come up and talk to so some of the, the, the furniture elements that you need to consider when you're designing these types of spaces as well. Um, so the, uh, these range from uh, not necessarily a fixed space at all, but, but the idea of being on the go, and, and David showed that one of those, um, those little, in fact, I'll jump to the next one, on the go is often uh, a mobile headset. These um, little speaker phones, um, you'll find uh, lots of sale team, sales teams use these a lot. It's, it's an ideal device to have an ad hoc uh, meeting and, and have a few people sit around and have an audio call. Um, the devices like your, your mobile device or tablet they're using is, is also uh, part of that. But these are really for your, your more mobile workers. Other spaces is, is this is sort of the more executive office, right, where you, you want to, to give them uh, somewhere that they can uh, focus in their own space, but also be available online and, and talk to external people uh, and, and have them looking the best. And again, there's, there's a range of devices from that, from um, if you want to, if you've got the budget to spend some money on a nice big Surface Hub, um, you could put one of them in there and go and interact with that. Um, the other space I talked to before, which we're seeing a lot of as well, is these huddle spaces. So they're, they're a, little, a little bit less formal. Um, meeting spaces, and uh, what I'm seeing a lot of it actually is, is sort of, a, yeah, it typically looks like this with a screen at the end of a table and audio video device sort of around that. And again, with the, the new devices that are coming out, there's, we can really push that price point down. And if you do some clever things with the uh, furniture and cabling and stuff, again, you can, you can do these quite affordably. Uh, so we're seeing more of these small spaces being deployed and, and putting technology in them so they can be used for external collaboration as well as internal meetings. Um, as opposed to the traditional sort of, I need to put a video conferencing unit into a big meeting room, and that's very much a limited resource. So there's lower cost solutions that are driving a lot more um, Skype-enabled meeting spaces. Um, the next generation conference room is, is really about, it's kind of more aligned with the traditional boardroom, right? But there's some, some new technologies and things that are coming into that as well. So one of them is, the, well, it was originally known actually as Roundtable, which is a little bit confusing because it means something else now, but this is a 360 degree camera that Microsoft developed and, and Polycom has taken on board as, as their own product now. Uh, and, and they released an update for that a while ago that it does 1080p. You can, it actually takes a panorama of the whole room of three, 360 degrees and provides a close up of the active speaker who happens to be speaking. So it's really changing, again, the, the traditional nature of uh, no longer is it just a, a table and a camera and screen at the end of the room. Uh, I've now got a camera in the middle of the room. It's capturing everything, and, and you've got to think about maybe how you uh, design the room for that as well. We'll look at some options for that. Um, these next generation conference rooms as well, typically that they might be used by my more senior execs, so that usability factor is really important. You, you don't necessarily need it or want to have, uh, have to have IT go and set up an initiator call. So having things like these touch devices where you can just have that one button push and touch is really important in these spaces. Uh, the vibe is, is probably is more of a, a social um, sort of area and these are sort of spaces that you'll see more in the sort of activity-based working environments as well. So again, it's, it's around usually more casual interaction with, with content and people. And the last is, uh, is auditorium as well, and this one can, can have a, um, a few challenges, uh, because especially around the audio, and um, Polycom's got a solution here with some of their audio processing devices that you can incorporate uh, back into Skype for Business. Uh, but that, this is uh, sort of getting, getting a bit more attention now, is that um, there's more and, more and more devices coming to give you the flexibility to integrate different types of cameras and different audio and microphone solutions back into this and provide a, a Skype for Business experience in these spaces. Uh, another example, I guess, of uh, Polycom's also got their group series endpoints, which are well, we're already Skype for Business native devices today, but the, the features and functionality in that continue to improve there. So we see them being used in, in these larger auditorium spaces. Uh, and this sort of space, the, the purpose of the room is obviously a bit different. It's not necessarily about collaboration between the people in there. It's usually about presentation uh, in, on a larger scale. So, Jared, do you want to come up and uh, talk to some of these spaces? All we wanted to talk to is take a, a couple of these examples and talk about how we, how we start thinking about furniture and, and the design uh, of these as well. So, starting off, first of all, with the next-gen conference room. Yeah, so it's a bit, it's a bit difficult to be exciting. Oof. It's right. a bit difficult yeah. to be exciting um, at a tech conference when you're talking about furniture, but 
I guess one of the things that, that occurs regularly in the office space is that we, we update technology and we move to new technology, but we don't think about the room that we're working in. Everyone has worked in an office where there's a meeting room in one particular area where it just doesn't work or you, know, you can't fit enough people in or there's too many people that are crowding around the space. And the technology really is talking to communication for all people within the room and then on the screen. One of the examples we just put up there on the, on the top left hand corner is, is, a, is a room where it, um, it shows a, a table that isn't a, a, a traditional long boardroom table. And it's very important, especially when you're using these sorts of technologies, that everyone in the room can see each other. And it's not always possible because of the shape of the, of the current meeting room. But if I use the example of Nathan sitting next to me at a table, and then we put six or seven people between us, Nathan's talking. The person on the screen might be able to see him using this technology, but I don't know. I can't see him. And then we sort of lean across. And that's the sort of stuff that you can think about. And again, you may not be the, the direct influencer on this or the, or the controller, but it's just something to think about when you are connecting new technology and how that can apply to the furniture. There's a lot of different things that, um, that create distractions in meeting rooms. You've got things such as ergonomics, people being comfortable when you're uncomfortable in a meeting room, you're sort of slouching, you're thinking about something else, it takes your focus away from the meeting. Um, again, more other things to be considered, such as the seating that you're sitting in, the, 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 the tables that you work on, whether they're height adjustable is a new thing. Sit to stand, I'm sure you've heard about that, and the, and, and the ability to, um, to be moving in the, in the meeting room. These are things that can all be easily done, and, and these are factors you've just got to think about when you do redesign the, 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 the office. Um, power and data, another classic case. Everyone brings devices to meeting rooms these days. <laughs> we never used to. We'd always sit in there with our, our pen and write our notes, and then off we'd go and then type it into our computer when we get back. People are running around the office all day with these devices. There's nowhere to plug in in the meeting, in the meeting room because there's just no, there's no power outlets and you know, USB fast chargers are, are available through all of these soft wiring firms these days. We don't think about that when we, we, we think about the meeting room. So again, considering what needs to be done to bring the whole package together, I think furniture is a, a big part of that. So just uh, actually, I want to go back to the slides. I want to point that, that, that layout, that room is one I, I quite like. Look, it's actually one from the UK, I think. But that's one where they've obviously designed the room around the concept of that 360 degree camera, right? So it's not a long table. We've got, there's actually a 360 degree camera in the middle of that and people are, are, are arranged around that so they can see each other. But they also, because of the way they're arranged, they also happen to be looking at, directly at the eye line of the camera. And they've got the content and video directly below. So if you see, if you're sitting from the side, you're looking at the content or the, the far end video, you're still looking towards the camera. So it's quite a, a clever design and arrangement. Um, that, that leverages, I guess, some of the new technology as well. We took a little bit of a different spin when we looked at MyStage, and I think MyStage, under the Microsoft sort of definition, was really around the, the, the personal office. We sort of looked at it as being the ability to be in a private space. Um, most offices these days you go to, there are never any meeting rooms available, I certainly know in our own office. The challenge to find a meeting room, you're better off going to the cafeteria if you wanted to have an informal meeting room, uh, informal meeting. But the, again, just looking at different options, the ability to be able to go to a quiet space, and we, we show this pod that was, it's called the Wow Pod, that's uh, from the UK, a company called Muso, and again, they're thinking really outside the norm when they when they develop these products, and they're not your sort of your, your everyday products, but. It's about creating a small space where you can have a private meeting or a private discussion, even with someone over, over um, technology, and appear to be professional. You've got that quiet uh, environment, which I think the last speaker talked about, the noise that's created in these open plane environments. These are the sorts of tools that we use to be able to create a, a small space, which is, is, is effective, it's, it's, it's price effective, and it doesn't have to be big, and you can, you can plot these into your, your, your open plan facilities at a lower cost than building a, a meeting room. Again, they just show the, the, the sort of different options that are available when, when you talk about that space. Um, there are some, some certain requirements around things like that, such as you, you've got to think about um, fire restrictions and. And, and things like that, so it, it's not for the, you, you know, just buy it, wheel it in and, and off you go. But again, um, th these, are, these are products that are available and, 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 and can be considered. Again, we took a slightly different thought around the vibe, but talking about the fact that there aren't enough meeting rooms, a lot of studies show that people will create greater ideas when they're not at their desk. 
When they're at their desk or they're in a standard meeting room, that's not where the ideas are generated. The ideas are generated in informal collaboration. And you'll see more and more these, these notions of, we call them quiet lounges, which are, are very popular. It's an area where people can collaborate. And again, you can, you can, you can include um, uh, fast charging so people can charge devices. You can include um, uh, panels and monitors for, for, for access if you do want to use technology for including other people that aren't in the room to the discussion. But these are really about public spaces where you can utilize the area, meet with colleagues, uh, have a discussion, it is informal, and move on. 30 minute discussions can be an hour, but it's not, the, it's not the standard use of a meeting room. And these are very effective as well because they take up a very good, uh, small um, uh, uh, footprint. And you can, again, your discussion is really around collaboration. It's not somewhere where you'd sit there and type all day a document, but it's, it's, it's where a lot, of, um, a lot of good conversations happen. Um, a lot of other research also talks to the fact that people want to be in an environment that is aesthetically appealing. It's, it, there's a lot of older studies, and I, and I won't go into, into to what I've read and, and what others have said, but generally what they say is that if it's an appealing place to be, we talk about retention, it's a place they want to be, it's a place they'll work to. These, these little quiet lounges, funnily enough, they've got a, it's like a high back couch, if you like, the, the, the way that they create a cocoon of, of, of sound is, is quite amazing and, and um, a few of the other guys were talking about, I think it was the Microsoft office that, that, that have exactly this sort of setup. And you walk in there and it's a really large area, you walk into the space and it's amazing how quiet it is within those little booths. Yeah, like a kind of silence. Yeah, like a kind of silence. <laughs> um, other considerations such as lighting as well, things that need to be considered, but again, I mean, I would, I would encourage you, if you are looking at, at, at these sorts of meeting spaces, to, to seek professional help. Um, there's a lot of design firms out there that focus on this. Um, but if you are doing changes, with it, making small changes within your organisation, um, there are a lot of furniture providers out there. We are, are one of them that can assist with that sort of um, change. So. I think that were the only three examples that we did use. Yeah, great. Here, Nathan. Thank you. So Jared's from Staples, so they have a, a business interiors part of the, the division of their business, and they've got some uh, some of the furniture actually outside there to, to go and have a look at. But uh, have a chat with them about, especially if you're looking at any um, projects around um, equipping meeting spaces, to, to get some ideas there. Uh, I don't, one other thing I just wanted to, to touch on uh, is the last slide is actually some of the work that Microsoft's doing in, in the research uh, and also where they're going with the product as well. Um, one of the interesting things I've heard about recently is this uh, idea of um, how they're using depth of field and focus uh, within video and, and meetings to actually um, bring the, the people who are in that meeting um, and only put them in focus and blur out the background. This is particularly important, again, we're thinking about shared meeting spaces and activity-based working. There's lots of other distractions and things going on in the background. So Microsoft's doing some interesting work at the moment with this technology that actually automatically blurs the rest of the background to keep the focus on, on the, the participant in the meeting. Uh, another cool thing that you might have seen videos around is Microsoft HoloLens. Um, there's some pretty amazing uh, potential uh, there when you look at uh, what can be done. And that's, that's, uh, as that comes to market, it will have uh, Skype built into that, that product, right? So you, if you've seen the videos, you can actually ha have a, an online meeting and a, a video interaction with someone who's actually in your field of vision. They can see basically what you're seeing through your eyes and annotate in your field of vision. So some amazing things um, happening there as well. Um, the Microsoft Graph is something that's actually pretty exciting. It it's kind of relates to the whole big data um, trend. Um, on the back end of all these communications and, and interactions that are going on, on, there's all this logging and data that's generated from that. Uh, and what Microsoft Graph does is in, in Office 365 and through the collaboration tools, takes that data and does useful things with it. And one of the impressive demos, if you take a look at the, the keynote from the Ignite in Chicago, they showed um, how they can analyze different groups of people and who they're, speak, they're, they're talking to and collaborating with. So if you've got different groups within your organization, it might be HR, marketing, sales, whatever that is, you can actually aggregate all this data up and actually look at how much the sales team is talking to the engineering team uh, or, or, or what the trends are in these different communications and give you actionable um, information of how you could actually improve collaboration and communication within the organization. 
Uh, another uh, thing that we're going to see a continuous improvement in as well is about um, these on-ramps into getting into online collaboration. So it'd be, it'd be easier and easier to get into to these online experiences. As I said one of the, the big drivers around meeting spaces was that, that start experience, making that uh, less than a minute. Uh, but you'll find that in the, the um, web interfaces and Office 365 um, product experiences, you'll see more and more ways to, to be able to initiate communication there as well. And as, as we already sort of touched on, there's new paradigms of devices, the idea of 360 degree cameras and these interactive touch displays and how they, that really changes the way that people can work. Um, I think there's some pretty exciting things to come uh, from Microsoft. So that actually wraps up our final session uh, for, the, for the plenary. Um, so from here, we're going to move back into the activity hub. And I think we've got some, some drinks. But mm, conscious of being between you and drinks, I'll, I will actually ask now if there's any other questions, since we've got a little bit of a couple of minutes uh, spare. But otherwise, I hope you've got something useful out of these, these sessions today. And, uh, and we'll be available out there for any questions anyway. Right. Thank you. Okay.